Today we'll be discussing odometry. So before we begin our characterization of the math involved in how you're going to calculate the odometry, let's answer three generic questions that you might have regarding odometry. The first one is what is it? Well, odometry is a way to determine and track the position of your robot on the field or just in a certain location or area, how far it's moved, the distance it's traveled using data from either some sort of sensor or encoder readings uh, or some other management system that you have created. The most common method that we use is odometers, and which is how can I use it? So you would use something called an odometer on a dead axle, right? So you want a dead wheel, which means that you have a wheel, normally an omni wheel, so it can you know move uh, horizontally, and you have it tensioned to the ground so that it rolls, and it's not, and it's that wheel is on an axle that is attached to an encoder, and instead of being attached to a motor, it's a free axle. So that's why it's called a dead axle, because it only moves when it's tension to the ground. And so that's what creates those encoder readings. Now you can also do odometry using um, more complicated math, which I might discuss in another video regarding things such as wheel speeds. Um, but right now we're going to go over Euler integration for odometry. Now, why do we use it? Well, it's a way of stepping away from time-based aut autonomous. And because time-based is heavily reliant upon the amperage and voltage and output draw of the motors and other mechanical systems that you have on your robot, uh, it becomes unreliable. Uh, you can have an extreme amount of drift, an extreme uh, amount of loss in precision with time with a time-based autonomous. And so we want to use odometry so that we can perfect the positions of the robot over time using different characterizations and, spe uh, and specific path generation as well. Uh, and that also answers how can I use it. You can use it for a lot of different things. You can use it for not only tracking the position of your robot, but you can also use it for determining path and maximizing path. And we might discuss that in a future video when I discuss Roadrunner and Pure Pursuit. All right, let's get into the math. The first thing that we want to define are our variables. So let's define our first few variables as such. We have our robot like this, right? We have one wheel here and one dead wheel there, all right? Now, what we're measuring here is this is the left side of the robot. So the amount of, so the data returned by that, by that odometer in the distance that it has moved vertically will be represented using delta x sub l. And this one will be represented delta x sub r. All right, so our current heading of the robot is theta. All right? We'll actually refer to its initial heading as theta sub i, with theta initial. Now, as it turns, That distance, that change, is going to be represented using phi. Phi representing our change in theta, and then our final heading is theta sub f, or final theta. We can also determine our change in our angle phi by doing phi equals delta x sub r minus delta x sub l over w. Now, what is w? Well, it's the distance between the centers of our odometers. And this is also referred to as our track width. And the next thing we want to know is we want to know how can I get the center path? Well, because this left side creates this path and this right side creates this path. So how can I get the center path? Well, just take the average of them. So that would be delta x sub c for center is equal to delta x sub r plus delta x sub l over 2. Simple. 
we'll also define theta final, right, being equal to um, theta initial plus phi, all right? Now, here's what we're going to determine using this. Now, currently we did not have a perpendicular encoder, right? But let's say, so we're going to perpetually give that a value of zero. So, we're going to say that our delta x vector, so like our change in x vector, be equal to delta x sub c, which is a constant, and this is a vector, and then 0. But we need to rotate that given the current orientation of our robot. And so we do that by multiplying that by a rotation matrix. And so that rotation matrix is actually going to be cosine of theta initial plus phi um, over 2, and then that is the angle of our rotation. And so then you just fill out the rest of that, and it's going to be a counterclockwise rotation. So then the next one is sine of theta initial plus phi over 2. Next one is negative sine of theta initial plus phi over 2. And the next one is uh, cosine of theta initial plus phi over 2. All right. Now, this is a 2 by 1 matrix, so we actually have to take the what? Transpose of it? Right. So we have to take the transpose of this matrix in order to turn it into a 1 by 2 matrix. Uh, and then we multiply that by this 2 by 2 matrix, and so our result is going to give us a 1 by 2 matrix. Then we'll take the transpose of that. So we'll say that this is the transpose of delta x, of our uh, delta x vector, right? Because we want it to be a 2 by 1 vector. So what we'll get here is we get delta x c 0 times that rotation matrix, which I'll just represent using this script R right here. Right? So, how am I going to multiply this out? Well, we do this times that, and then this times that. So we do this, that, this, plus that. Right? And I'll show you how that works. So this would actually give you delta xc times, oh, so this would actually give you delta xc times cosine theta initial plus phi over 2, and then plus 0 times this, so that's just 0, and then, then we go back up here times that, so we get plus delta xc, that's not plus, my bad, this is a vector, Uh, sine of theta initial plus phi over 2. And so this is our vector. This is our delta x vector, right? And so how do we determine our current location representative of x vec? Well, that's just equal to our initial x plus our delta x. Now, say we do have a perpendicular horizontal encoder right here. You're going to have delta xc, and then you're going to have delta x uh, perp, which represents that perpendicular encoder, right? This is going to give you a bit of a different answer, and so that answer is actually going to give you, well, when we do this, we actually get delta, when we do this, we get delta x uh, is going to be we have 
this time this times that column, this row times that column, which gives you delta xc minus oh delta xc cosine right of theta initial plus phi over two minus delta x perp sine of theta initial plus phi over two. All right? And then our second would be delta xc sine of theta initial plus phi over two. And then that's gonna be plus delta x perp cosine of theta initial plus phi over 2. And so that is how you derive your equation. And then it's the same thing as it was before, which is you have your current position, x vec, is equal to your initial x, x initial vec, or x sub i vec, uh, plus your delta x vec. So it's the same equation as before. The only difference is that now, instead of zero, we have delta x perp.